손님을 두고 왔어. What's up, boys and girls? I just saw the Korean film A Taxi Driver, which is actually the eighth or ninth highest grossing Korean film of all time. I watched this film yesterday in a theater full of 10 Korean people, and three of them were nuns. Now, I cried through the entire third act of this film, and it wasn't just me. I heard sniffling through the entire theater. Now, I'm not a stranger to crying in movies, but this movie has so much heart, and the characters were so lovable from top to bottom. Not only that, but the score was beautiful, and it, you didn't even notice what it was doing to you emotionally until you, after you left the theater. Now, the movie is about the 1980 Gwangju massacre in South Korea, which was a pinnacle event in its history for its fight for democracy. In 1979, there was an assassination of then-dictator Park Chung-hee, and that sparked hopes of democracy between the college and the youths of Korea. Unfortunately, General Chung Du hwan took power and declared martial law in 1980. In Gwangju, protests spilled out of the universities and into the streets, and military used brute force to keep them down. The Korean government wanted to keep all the foreign press out, but a German reporter by the name of Jurgen Hinspeter went to Korea with his video camera. Are you a reporter? When he lands, he tells his contact in Korea that he needs a taxi to take him from Seoul to Guangzhou. Now, Kim, who's the main protagonist of this film, is a single father who is struggling to make ends meet. He's a taxi driver, and when he hears that a foreigner is going to pay $900 just for one taxi ride, he decides to steal the fare from another taxi driver. Him and Jurgen meet for the first time in Seoul, and their adventure begins as they dive into the heart of Guangzhou, where there is incredible amount of death and violence, but also strength and heart from the citizens. This movie is based on true events, and the director, Jang Hoon, brings a sappy, feel-good story to a very tragic event. He does this by focusing on the two main characters, the reporter and the taxi driver who's helping the reporter get this news out to the rest of the world. This movie has an incredible amount of heart to it. All the characters are incredibly lovable. <laughs> that they are all inherently good. The director makes them all lovable because they symbolize the best side of humanity. Another thing that I really loved about this movie was the taxi driver character played by Song Kang-ho. Now his character seems to be like the typical fat, old-fashioned, cheap, and at times despicable character that you see. <laughs> but as you watch and you get these little scenes that he's in, you start to realize that deep down he has a heart of gold. The early parts of the movie show him trying and struggling to take care of the cutest little daughter that he has and how much the death of his wife took from him. It's hard not to root for him. Not only that, but the character is actually very funny. He has some funny lines and some funny mannerisms and Song Kang Ho plays it perfectly with his comedic timing. <laughs> Now, when you pair Kim with these, like I said, lovable characters, his interactions with them, the way he jokes around with them, the happy moments that they have, and the struggle that they go through through in the, the entire movie, it's really hard not to cry at certain times. I cried five or six times, like I said, through the third act. You might not cry, but it's a beautiful movie, and it just symbolizes and it shows the goodness that we can all be. Promise me, you're not alone. Now, the one thing I didn't like about this movie is that it is a drama movie, but there are times where it teeters on the edge of fantasy and it sometimes turns into a full-fledged action film. When the government finds out that Kim is harboring a foreigner that's trying to get the news out, they send out, you know, evil government officials to go capture them. There could be a dramatic scene, but suddenly, when the evil officials see Kim and Jurgen, 
It turns into like an action adventure chase scene as they run through alleyways. Not only that, but there's even a car chase scene at the very end of the movie. The thing is, even with those chase scenes, and even though at times, like I said, it turns into an action adventure flick, it's so good and you're so emotionally invested in the characters and the story that you don't care. You just, you just want to see these characters live together and love each other and really just have a good time together. You, you're just so invested in their lives. Now it is a sappy and perfect film. There's the ultimate evil of the government and there's the um, you know, absolute good of Kim and, and the Jurgen, but I don't really care. It's, it's just a great enjoyable film that you'll get, like I said, emotionally invested in and you'll love every minute of it. So for my final review, I give it a nine out of 10. If a movie can make me cry as much as that movie made me cry, I have to give it at least, you know, that high of a score. There are some people who might not like how perfect it is. It kind of reminds me of, you know, uh, Remember the Titans, where it's a little too perfect and you read up on it and none of that stuff really happened. I don't want to read up on this film. I just want to love the characters for who they were, even though they're slightly based on real life characters. I don't care. I love this film and I loved how it made me feel. And if you like films like that, feel good films, sappy feel good films, then you'll like this film. Well, this is Ken for the review of the Korean film, A Taxi Driver. You guys need to go watch it. If you've seen it, comment below. Tell me if you cried as much as I cried. But this is Black and Yellow Movies. If you like independent foreign film, please subscribe below and uh, like us on Facebook. And I'll be back with another foreign or independent movie reel. See ya. <laughs> Yeah, my